Hi everyone, it's Mojax, back in the DJ City UK lab. The SoundSwitch team have just announced the newest addition to their hardware ecosystem, the Control One. I've had one in hand for a few weeks, so here's my full review. Let's get to it. The Control One is a hardware controller and USB to DMX interface for SoundSwitch. It has a street price of around $300 in the US and comes with three months of access to the full SoundSwitch software. After that, the subscription is $7.99 a month or $79.99 annually. This is quite a tricky product for me to review, as the main job the Control One does is to manifest many of the existing SoundSwitch features in a hardware form. So to really explain and demonstrate its many functions, I would need to do the same for SoundSwitch itself, and that would make for a very long video indeed. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to assume you already have a certain level of knowledge about the software. If you don't, then I would point you to the official SoundSwitch YouTube channel, which has a load of really in-depth tutorials released at the same time as the recent 2.3 update. There are also two other channels you should check out too, Marlon Ace and DJ Brian Smith, both of whom have very useful tutorials on the topic. Where I'm at with SoundSwitch personally is that I've really fallen in love with it in the past couple of years. The irony is that in my first review of the software back in 2016, I said it was a cool performance tool but wasn't very good for mobile DJs as it just wasn't automated enough. But now, thanks to the very impressive auto scripting, all it takes is a bit of prep time and the software can create excellent synchronized light shows for all of your music. Get everything set up correctly and you can use it with Serato DJ Pro, Virtual DJ, Engine OS Standalone and even Ableton Link without ever having to think about it. The whole process is automated for you. Why then would you want a hardware controller with all these buttons? Well, there are situations where automated can't ever quite be enough. There could be times when, as a mobile DJ, you need certain lights to do particular things like highlighting an entrance or the bridal couple during their first dance. And it may be that you're using sound switch to control the lighting during another DJ's performance or while a band play. Or maybe you just want to switch up some features manually, operate a fog machine, change the overall colour of the show, hit the strobe, etc. The Control One itself is a fairly chunky bit of kit, built of that soft touch plastic which feels great although does show up greasy finger marks fairly readily. It certainly feels sturdy enough for a life on the road. The pads feel very nice indeed with lots of travel, although I think I would have preferred a more positive click on activation. There were a few times when I thought I'd selected something and I hadn't. It's not a deal breaker though, more something you need to get used to. The LED feedback is on the whole very solid too. I'd caution you against using darker colours for the MIDI output when setting them manually if possible as they just don't show up all that well. But I appreciate the amount of colour coding on the unit which really helps you know at a glance what's going on. In terms of connections, we have three pairs, two USBs and two each of DMX in and out ports on three pin XLRs. We'll talk about those DMX ports first. SoundSwitch has always been capable of controlling two DMX universes of 512 channels each, but previously you needed two separate interfaces to do so. The Control One is the first piece of dedicated hardware to control both. This will be fantastic for really big shows and I do really like it, but I do think it would have been nice to be able to route Universe 1 to both outputs as you can on some other DMX interfaces. I can't see myself filling up an entire universe anytime soon, but I would find it useful to be able to send signal to the same universe via a wireless DMX transmitter in one port and a regular cable in the other. The other first on SoundSwitch software here is the DMX input ports, again, one for each universe. This could be incredibly handy for DJs wanting to set up SoundSwitch in a venue, having control over the house lighting rig when playing with SoundSwitch, but defaulting to the existing DMX control at other times. This can be done when the control one is powered up and live by switching the universes to through rather than USB control individually or both together. But when the unit is disconnected and powered off, there is also a hardware pass through. So as you can see, here, here, when I pull the USB on the Control One, the Wolf Mix W1 DMX controller, review on that is coming soon, takes over immediately, and vice versa. When I connect the Control One and sound switch is already playing, the software takes over control without fuss. Ultimately, that feature really opens up the potential use cases for sound switch in clubs or bars, and might make the Control One a worthy investment for some users just on its own. But of course, there is more. The two USBs make it simple for two sound switch users to swap between each other as and when they like. This is completely seamless in use, entirely straightforward. To make it even easier for multiple DJs to use the Control One, it has some built-in memory, so you can save a particular venue to the unit, along with the associated auto loops. Any DJ connecting to it can load up that venue in their software, and all the fixture information is available to them instantly. 
One thing to note, if that DJ hasn't scripted or auto-scripted their music for that venue, then the light show won't be quite as impressive. There won't be any fancy chases or similar for individual fixtures. If you were to turn up at a venue, connect to their Control 1 and use music scripted with other venues, you might not be making the best use of the fixtures there. That won't apply to auto loops of course, which come in as part of that venue information and so can feature any of the whiz -bang stuff which has been programmed into them. When it comes to the actual um, controls on the Control 1, it's both comprehensive and easy to work with. The top section features a small but very clear OLED display with accompanying rotary encoder and buttons to adjust settings in the menu. It also gives you visual feedback on the effect controls found below, movement, strobe, hue and smoke. When active, there are two more rotary encoders to control the parameters of those effects, making it very easy to adjust things on the fly. Here you'll also find the transport controls, BPM tap and link, and the button which allows you to override a scripted show with an auto loop in case it isn't looking how you want. Below all that is the colour and position override section. Here you can change the colour of the whole show at the touch of a button, or hit white for blinders, or do UV and blackout. On the shift layer is the position overrides. You can choose which button does which position, but the actual physical positioning of moving fixtures in relation to those overrides will be needed to be done in the software and then saved to the venue. All very useful stuff to have immediately at hand though. At the bottom of the unit is the controls for the 32 auto loops and static looks. Auto loops are where the real action is if you're controlling lights for another performer or playing with unscripted music. You can also choose which bank the software is going to play from or select all and control the overall intensity of them with the touch slider. That slider can also be set to control the intensity of scripted tracks and even be split out to control different groups of fixtures. By pressing the auto loop button, you switch to controlling static looks instead. And again, having instant access to 32 of those with suitable color coding is very handy. It's worth noting that static looks don't have to override all of your fixtures. You can, for example, focus a moving head or two onto a stage, whilst the other fixtures in your rig carry on reacting to scripts or auto loops. If you're a sound switch user and you haven't dived too deep into static looks yet, I recommend you do. They're a very powerful feature once you understand what they're capable of. One thing which is important to keep in mind when discussing the Control 1 is that the MIDI mapping available in SoundSwitch is actually very comprehensive. There will be many long-time users, I suspect, who have already put in the work to map things like launch pads or APCs to the software, and therefore may be thinking twice about spending the extra money on a Control 1. There are still some good reasons to upgrade though. Personally, I really like having properly factory labelled controls. You have the screen to visibly show you effects parameters, and it means one less USB port is used up on your computer as the controller and interface only take up one. And that's before you get into the clear advantages of the dual DMX and USB interface. And of course, we mustn't forget the crop of users now working with SoundSwitch on their engine OS hardware, with which the Control 1 is fully compatible. Within the OS, you do get a full suite of on-screen controls, but those aren't as readily accessible as the hardware is. Plus, when using embedded SoundSwitch, or engine lighting as they call it, you can't MIDI map an external controller, so the Control 1 is really your only option. So whether you're using engine lighting with an all-in-one device, or the separate players and mixer, there's no doubt that the Control 1 is a killer addition to those setups. So there you go, my take on the Control 1 from SoundSwitch. My fundamental takeaway is that first of all, this is not a beginner's SoundSwitch device. Not because it's hard to use, it's not, but because it's a big commitment to make. $300 with a three month free trial, then you're committing to $80 a year for the software. That's a big step to take. So if you're just looking to get into SoundSwitch, you should definitely start with the micro DMX to USB dongle. It's like 30, 40 bucks, comes with three months of the software as well. That's the way to try it out and see if it fits into your workflow. For me, this though is like the ultimate sound switch companion. You've got all that control with the screen for the feedback over the effects as well. Two universes, the DMX in, which I think is a very powerful thing to have there. We haven't had that on any sound switch hardware before. The two USBs, and let's not forget the fact that you can use this with Engine OS as well, with that Prime Series hardware, with your new Mark Mixstream Pro, whatever it is, you can hook this up and have full control over your lighting. That's still kind of magic. Just the idea of sound switch embedded into hardware is pretty magic. But then if you expand that out with this kind of control, yeah, unbelievable stuff. So it's a very solid device, kind of niche in that you do need to be a committed sound switch user to really get the value from it. But if that is you, yeah, you won't be disappointed with the Control One. Thanks for watching today. Make sure you subscribe and you hit that bell icon down below to get notified anytime there's a new video from myself or the rest of the DJ City team. 
I'll see you soon.